Watch, what's going on? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things Dahmer Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, got factually right and wrong. What I did, I should be dead. For this list, we're looking at what was fact and what was fiction in Ryan Murphy's Netflix series about the infamous serial killer. Are you watching Dahmer? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. How Jeffrey Dahmer Was Caught Right. Netflix's limited series about Jeffrey Dahmer begins with the night a would-be victim survived an encounter with the killer. It's my call, the police! Help me! On July 22, 1991, Tracy Edwards spent hours in Dahmer's apartment in fear, waiting for an opportunity to make his escape. And though the way in which he escaped is depicted differently in the series, Edwards did hit Dahmer and ran out of the apartment. Uh, I hit him I, and I ran towards the door and he like was right there, tried to grab me, get me back in there. Two police officers went to Dahmer's residence to obtain the key to unlock the handcuffs still on one of Edwards' wrists. Once they found explicit photos documenting some of the murders, Dahmer was apprehended putting an end to his reign of terror. The officers were stopped by an individual who claimed he was in the apartment and became engaged in a dispute with the owner of the apartment and uh, left the apartment and called the officers. Number nine, Dahmer wore yellow contacts. Right, one of the lesser known facts about Dahmer was his strange habit of wearing yellow contact lenses. You see my contacts? Just like the emperors. Got him in a costume shop in Kenosha. He wore them because he felt connected to two dark characters in his favorite movies. The Emperor from Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi, and the Gemini Killer from The Exorcist Three. In changing his appearance to resemble these powerful fictional figures, Dahmer himself felt more powerful and predatory that I, I actually derives a sort of pleasure from watching that tape. Did you like feeling evil? No, no, I didn't. But uh, I had tried to overcome the thoughts and it worked for a while, but eventually I gave in. He repeatedly watched the films before he went out to find another victim to bring home, often making them watch the films with him. What are you gonna do? I told you, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna watch a movie, we're gonna take some pictures, and then I'll pay you. Tracy Edwards also testified that while playing The Exorcist 3, Dahmer was chanting and rocking back and forth. It was like a slow slur, like, mmm, some of that nature, some close like that, I'm not sure. Did it keep on for a period of time? Off and on throughout the ordeal. Number eight. How Ronald Flowers Survived. Wrong. Jesus. Don't worry, I'm not a cop. Another survivor of Dahmer was Ron Flowers, who met him when his car broke down and Dahmer offered to help. He took him to his grandmother's West Allis residence and drugged his coffee. But Dahmer is interrupted when his grandmother sees that something is wrong with the young man. You should take that young man to a hospital. What? He's just a little wasted, Grandma. I will not have some stranger dying in my house. He'll be fine. Just let him sleep it off. Jeez. No. Something is not right here. She is adamant about staying with the unconscious guest, making sure he gets on a bus the next morning. But her actual involvement in saving flowers from her grandson has never been reported. Like in the series, Flowers woke up in County General Hospital. Where am I? You OD'd. You're lucky to be alive. But what isn't mentioned is that he was also covered in abrasions and believed he might have been assaulted. He later testified that he didn't know how he got there, though the series provides a fictional scenario. A guy I met last night, he was weird. He, he must have slipped something in my drink. Dude tried to kill me. Number seven, Dahmer posed in yearbook photos. Right. How did he get in there? I don't know. Dan, how did you not catch this? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't see him in the photo. That's your goddamn job, Dan. The Netflix series mainly follows Jeffrey Dahmer as an adult. 
but a flashback to him in high school shows him sneaking into a yearbook picture for the Honor Society, despite not being a member. Yes, he actually did this, and his face was subsequently blacked out of the photo. My Friend Dahmer, both the graphic novel and its film adaptation, go further into the prank and the other club photos he infiltrated. Excuse me, what are you... Oh, no. Wait, what, what are you... Is that really necessary? Former classmates have described how his bizarre behavior in school quickly went from entertaining to concerning, given his heavy drinking. And I remember sitting next to him in a, a first period, I believe, history class, and he had a styrofoam cup of scotch, I believe it was scotch. I remember saying, Jeff, what is that? And he threw his head back and he shook it and he said, it's my medicine. Number six, Dahmer killed Dean Vaughn. Wrong. In episode seven, Glenda Cleveland meets Dean Vaughn, a new resident of the Oxford Apartments. Sorry I snapped on you. You just you gotta be careful in this neighborhood. Well, I'm a good guy. Scout's honor. She sees him talking to Dahmer in the hall and is visibly concerned. The series doesn't follow through with his story, but it does point viewers in a certain direction. However, Vaughn was really a tenant in the building. He was found strangled in his upstairs apartment in early May 1991. Dahmer was questioned about the suspicious death before he was arrested, and again when he was eventually caught. Both times he denied knowing him, and no evidence was ever found connecting him to the crime. As of 2022, the murder of Dean Vaughn is still unsolved. And what about Dean Vaughn? You was talking to him in the hallway, then I never saw him after that. Number five, baptized the same day as John Wayne Gacy's execution. Right. So you've never done construction work before? No. Well, I like I said, it's just stuff around the house, top of my mind, you know. The beginning of the final episode doesn't open on Jeffrey Dahmer, but rather another infamous serial killer, John Wayne Gacy, AKA the Killer Clown. In the 1970s, Gacy took the lives of more than 33 young men in Illinois until he was arrested in December 1978. Gacy was the epitome of evil, and he was the epitome of being a great guy, which gave him the ability to be the most evil guy in the world. For 14 years, the convicted murderer was on death row at Illinois' Menard Correctional Center. And on May 10, 1994, Gacy was executed by lethal injection. John Wayne Gacy was pronounced dead at 12.58 uh, uh, a.m. He got a much easier death than any of his victims. In my opinion, he got an easier death than he deserved. But the important thing is that he paid for his crimes with his life. Meanwhile, in Wisconsin, Dahmer was being baptized by Minister Roy Ratcliffe. And as it's briefly mentioned in the series, a partial solar eclipse also occurred that day. What does it all mean? We don't know, but this connection between two notorious killers is definitely eerie. Uh, congratulations, Jeff. You saved. Thanks. Thank you. Number four, victim impact statements. Right. I would like to say to Jeffrey Dahmer that he don't know the pain, the hurt, the loss, and the mental state he's put our family in. One of the most heartbreaking parts of Jeffrey Dahmer's 1992 trial was hearing the impact statements. After sitting through the details of his crimes, family members of the victims had the opportunity to address the court. One of the more harrowing statements came from Rita Isbell, the sister of Errol Lindsay. The series recreates the emotionally charged moment with actress Deshaun Barnes, who embodied the palpable pain, anger, and sadness of Isbell in her performance. Now, I don't want to Again. Never, Jeffrey! Jeffrey! I hate you! And Dahmer's own statement took a lot from the real life one. That I did what I did, not for reasons of hate. I hated no one. Number three, Glenda Cleveland lived at the Oxford Apartments. Wrong. In the series, actress Niecy Nash plays the role of Glenda Cleveland, a woman who is often overlooked in the Jeffrey Dahmer case. 
She interacts with him, mostly to complain about the smell and noise coming from his apartment through her vent. I gotta say, that smell is worse than ever. Is it? The real Cleveland actually lived in the building next to the Oxford Apartments. The character is likely a composite of Cleveland and Pamela Bass, the woman who lived across the hall from Dahmer, who possibly unknowingly consumed human meat given to her by her neighbor. However, Glenda Cleveland did continuously call Milwaukee police after her daughter Sandra Smith and niece Nicole Childress told her about a boy they tried to help. Number two, Milwaukee police officers returned a victim back to Dahmer's apartment. Right. <laughs> Kid, what are you doing? In late May 1991, some young women, including Smith and Childress, found Conorak sent the SOM phone stumbling in the streets, not in the Oxford Apartments hallway as shown in the series. They called the police to help the very young-looking boy. He was holding on to me with a really, really strong grip, and he was trembling, he was shaking. So I just stayed with him and I was like, I'm gonna get you some help. But when Dahmer came back to his apartment, he convinced officers Joseph Gabrish and John Balserzak that Cynthia Somphone was of age and his boyfriend. In the series, Cleveland is at the scene confronting police, trying to tell them that he was a minor. Wait, 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 you, 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 you're just gonna let him take this baby back inside? Ma'am, he's telling me this is where they live. We're gonna take him back inside. Uh, Y'all don't at least wanna find out how old this boy is first? Ma'am, he says that's his boyfriend. We'll handle it from here. I'm really sorry about this, everybody. Despite protests from the women, the officers escorted Dahmer and his incoherent boyfriend back to his apartment. When the police left, Dahmer killed him. Tragically, this poorly handled ordeal actually happened. After Dahmer's arrest, Gabrish and Balserzak were suspended, but later reinstated. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Dahmer always wore his glasses at trial. Wrong. Mr. Dahmer, before I impose sentence, I understand you have a statement you'd like to read? Yes, Your Honor. Towards the end of the series, Jeffrey Dahmer goes on trial for the murders. While the majority of the scenes are accurately recreated, there's one detail that was different. Evan Peters as Dahmer almost always wears the killer's trademark glasses. But the real Dahmer specifically did not wear his glasses throughout most of the trial. His reason? He didn't want to look the jury or victims' families in the face. Yes, it's a small inaccuracy in a largely true-to-life series. However, his decision to remove his eyewear is significant because it shows that he was unable to face his crimes. Because I didn't feel accountable to anybody. I didn't feel that I had to, to uh, face what I had done ever. And uh, so you, you have, there comes a point where a person has to, has to be accountable for what he's done. Can't go, can't go around making excuses, uh, blaming other people or other things. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.